This is 2 Corinthians 5.21. Illustrated, 2 Corinthians 5.21 reads in the Greek, Don mi gnonta amartian, iper imon amartian epiesen, inaimis genometha dikeosini deu en auto. And in the English, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The subject matter of 2 Corinthians 5.21 is the doctrine of imputations. The word imputation derives from the Latin imputare, meaning to reckon, to charge to one's account. For example, in Philemon 118, Paul says, but he has, if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. There are two different types of imputations. First, there are real imputations, where what is imputed has an affinity, which is an agreement or a correspondence with that to which it is imputed. We are not dealing with real imputations in 2 Corinthians 5.21. Instead, we are dealing with judicial imputations, where what is imputed has no affinity, agreement, or correspondence with that to which it is imputed. So, we have two judicial imputations in 2 Corinthians 5.21. Number one, our sin is imputed to Christ. And there is no affinity between sin and Christ because Christ is righteous. Number two, Christ's righteousness is imputed to us and there is no affinity because we are sinners. And there is no affinity between us as sinners and righteousness. Now, it's important to note two things. Number one, that the imputation of our sin to Christ took place at the cross, but it is not efficacious until we believe, at which point Christ's righteousness is imputed to us. And it is also important to remember, number two, that salvation is conditioned solely on belief. At the point at which we believe in Christ, this imputation of our sin to Christ and Christ's righteousness to us takes place. The scripture says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Very important to remember because to say that salvation is conditioned on anything other than belief is not biblical. The gospel is very simple. It's a matter of believing in Jesus Christ. And to complicate it any further than that is a perversion and a pollution of the simplicity that is the gospel. So now, after these two judicial imputations take place, what God the Father now sees is he sees Christ's righteousness sitting in our account. And that is a transaction that cannot be undone. So our eternal salvation is now secured. God the Father sees us as righteous.